That's better. What's up, guys? Landon here from FullTimeFilmmaker.com. Yes, I'm back. It's been a minute. We're actually filming in my studio today. Some of you may know that I actually run my own creative agency in this building. I've also simultaneously been doing YouTube and Instagram stuff on the side. And Parker just invited me back to help pump out some more content for the channel. Now, this video is obviously going to be about filters, but I think even a lot of the earlier videos that I did on this channel, I wasn't using ND filters at all. And when it came to like shutter speed specifically, my eyes actually couldn't even tell a difference. My, they just weren't trained at that point. And shutter speed is a big difference why you actually use an ND. I'm gonna do the most cliche comparison right here. I'm gonna take off that variable ND that we're currently using. This is the two to five. As you can tell, it's immediately overexposed because I like to shoot wide open on this lens. That's F 2.8. But now to get my shutter speed where it should be at one over 50 because we're shooting at 24 FPS, either have to crank my aperture up to 5.6, or I need to crank my shutter speed to one over 250, and the motion blur is different, slightly more jittery. Here's a side-by-side -side if you really want it. Or the best option, obviously, is gonna be to add another piece of glass like this VND to actually darken the image. So when Peter McKinnon launched his original NDs back in the day, I picked a couple of them up and I never looked back because they're solid, much better than other variable NDs I tried at the time, but they're very standard in the way that they actually attach to your lenses, just like any other filter you thread them on. If you have a bunch of lenses, but only one filter, when it's time to change focal lengths, you're not just taking the lens off of your camera and putting a new one on, you're actually doing that. Plus unscrewing the ND from your old lens and then screwing it back on to the new one. So to make your life just a little bit easier, Polar Pro has launched Helix. Helix is actually a magnetic twist locking filter system, so you don't have to thread on your lenses every time you want to use one. You also now don't have to buy more than one filter so each lens can have one. You actually technically don't even need to buy those standard step up or step down rings. Every filter in the Helix system is that 82 millimeter thread size and then magnetically attached to your thread bases that you attach first to all your lenses. Step one, you grab your lens that you're gonna be using and you attach that thread base just one time. You keep it on your lens always. All the Peter McKinnon series filters that Polar Pro sent me have already launched. I do have a CRISPR card polarizer somewhere here, but we're not gonna talk about that. That hasn't come out yet. There's actually a bunch more filters beyond what I have that you can pick up. I just have them send the ones that we use most, which is the two to five and the six to nine variable NDs. Uh, the mists, there's a standard and then there's a high, and then those same variable NDs with mist built in. So you grab the filter, you squeeze the two buttons here on the back to take off that back plate. And then you'll grab your lens, squeeze them just to line them up, twist it, click. So now you know it's locked in. And then obviously do the same thing with that front plate as well. Here, let me put it close to the mic. Nice. Actually, I don't even know if this was intentional. I don't think it's listed as a feature actually, but these seem to be stackable with each other. So technically I could throw on this six to nine variable ND and then add a mist on top of it, just like that. Take the cap off, so now it's a six to nine plus a mist. I guess technically I could add on another mist if we wanted to. Should we see how many we can stack on here? This is gonna look ridiculous. <laughs> there it is, just a black hole. Can't see anything through that. So whether or not that's an intentional feature still pretty awesome. What's nice too is that when you take the filter off, that thread base, this thing right here, is actually still compatible with the cap for the filter. And so I can use this as just a normal lens cap, no filter attached. And Polar Pro also has just normal lens caps. Like you can just buy these by themselves and then use them as your lens caps. And that way your filters are protected just like that. And your lenses are protected. The build quality on this is exactly what you'd expect from Polar Pro. Everything is full brass construction and then you have a rubber trim for the grip. And then they gave Pete's filters some gold speckles, which I thought was a nice touch. Okay, so there's an overview. Let's go film something. So one thing about ND filters, especially VNDs, is your color will, I'm just gonna pump that aperture up to what, F9. So like this is coloring without the ND, just out of camera. And then if I throw on 
that and the bring this back down. So right there, you can see a difference in color. Like I'm gonna put these side by side, something to be aware of. But overall, I feel like these aren't too crazy. I don't know if I've ever used an ND that didn't have a color cast, have you? No. Well, there you go. You can definitely tell the difference between like one over 50 and then one over whatever that was, like 640, something like that. Yeah, it's so bad, especially like on rollers, it's so much more obvious. Like me waving my hand on camera, like you can tell but it's not the end of the world. But on rollers like this, you need that blur. Basically what you do is you take your frame rate and you double it and that's how you get your shutter speed. So one over 50 is what you would use for 24 frames per second. Ideally one over 48, but 50 is usually the closest you get. Or life hack, just if you if your camera can do shutter angle, just do 180 degree shutter angle, because what it does is it'll double your frame rate. So whenever you change your frame rate, your shutter speed will follow and you won't have to worry about it. So using ND filters in the sun is pretty obvious, but what about a studio setting? Run it. Should I hold the filters too as a prop? Oh yeah, like pockets for your filters. Oh wait, never mind. there's no pocket in here. So variable NDs aren't just for direct sunlight. Like you can see in this talking head, I'm using one inside right now so I can have my exposure settings a certain way. But we're also not just talking about NDs in this video, we're talking about mist filters too. So here's a shot without any filter. Here it is with the mist, and then here it is with the heavy mist quick side by side for you. If I get closer to the camera, you can see it even more looking at my skin. It's nice and creamy. And the mist is actually even more noticeable when you have a light source in the shot like this. You get that nice blooming effect, which is super cinematic and very popular right now. So personally, I'm a big fan. I think Polar Pro nailed it with this design. Like they feel super, super premium, not to mention they're really fun to twist off and on that nice. Ah, just wait. That clicky sounds nice. These filters are actually live now, ready to purchase. So if you want to pick one up, go ahead, hit the link in the description below. And if you're ready to learn more about NDs and other filmmaking techniques, but you don't know where to start, go check out Full Time Filmmaker. We actually have a free online training. There's no strings attached. You can watch that to help you get started. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And as always, if you have any further questions, please let me know.